have a very fun segment. We're going to do an Ask Me Anything with Madan Kumar and Kirubakaran, where you guys can ask all of your queries and they will be more than happy to help you. I would like to welcome Madan Kumar and Kirubakaran. So how many of you ended in profits today? Yeah, I could see the smiling faces. <laughs> Good, Sensex did not move much today. Chuk, chuk. That's, that's the way of Sensex luring you in. So let's see in after two weeks, right? Yeah, um, my name is Krubakaran Rajendran and I'm from Chennai and I've been trading since 2008, but I've been doing full-time trading since 2017. So I was into IT for almost 10 years. Then I quit my job to focus completely on no, algo trading. So I've been doing uh, no, full-time algo trading since 2017. And uh, my major interest is specifically in uh, no, systems development, backtesting, mechanical trading systems. No, those are my expertise. And beyond trading, my interest is mostly you know, watching movies and traveling, that's all. Uh, my name is uh, Madan, I'm from Chennai, born and brought up there. Uh, I'm 44 years old. Uh, I'm a full-time trader, trading for the last several years, 17, 18 years now. Uh, been good, uh, things are fine. So no, this session is going to be kind of an AMA session. So no, most people will have certain questions related to you no know, trading systems or trading in general. So no, this is whatever questions that you have in your mind related to trading and investing. Yeah, you can shoot up. See, see, guys, see the the reason for this session is see I have done so many sessions on trading psychology, money management. People who know me, you know, knows that I'm I'm a big time sucker for money management, right? So uh, what I want to have in this session is complete interaction. That's why it's called ask me anything. I mean, of course, you cannot ask my waist size. Other than that, you can go ahead and ask me anything. Uh, if I'm able to you know, answer it in a very integral way with a lot of honesty, I will do it. If I'm not able to answer it because of some kind of you know, diplomacy, I won't answer it. But ask me anything, guys. Ask, me, ask anything to Kriba, ask me anything. Related to trading, related to non-trading too. If I know the answer, I'm going to let you know. Why I want to keep this session is usually what happens is uh, any speaker that comes in, you know, they're going to have a presentation. Usually it's monotonous. And the question and answer sessions are usually five to ten minutes, right? I'm sure a lot of people want to, have, want to ask questions, but unfortunately, we do not have time uh, to the speakers. This particular session is only about picking the speaker's mind. So... Uh, I'm a big time fan of speaking speak you no know, people's mind because that is when you're going to get a lot of good nuggets, right? So I think Kribagran has almost more than 10, 11, 12 years of experience. I have around 15 years of experience. So uh, if you're new into the markets, I'm sure there are a lot of questions for you. If you're into the markets for 10 plus years, I'm sure there are certain questions which you might have. Uh, I remember in one of the sessions, Santosh Pasi was asking me a question. So people who are experienced also will have a lot of questions. So, And we want to make sure that Whoever has any questions, I know the first couple of questions are going to be a little bit delayed because the starting problem for a lot of people here, I know that. But once we keep on going, I think we should start rolling. So uh, I'm very good at picking people who are sleeping, so <laughs> please be aware of, about that. So if you are sleeping now, please be awake and go ahead. Ask, and ask me anything. Start. Let's go with the mics, man. Uh, Sadi, please hand over the mics to me. Yeah, please uh, tell to whom the question is addressed to. Please introduce yourself, where you're from, your name, what you do for a living, and then your question. I'm, I'm, I'm already looking at Mr. Jagadish and Duraraj smiling. <laughs> Friends, it is actually a great opportunity. Don't miss it because uh, with the sessions and all, you will only get five to 10 minutes of Q&As, one to two questions. We will so come to make everyone. use of the this opportunity. Like I can like see many hour. hands. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll go one by one from this side. Yeah, please start. Hi, Sitman. from Lucknow. What's your name? Uh, Pulkit. Pulkit. I have traveled all the way from Lucknow. I'm a full-time trader. Okay. Uh, uh, my question is for you, Kirba, sir. Uh, what would you suggest for a non-tech background if he wants to uh, foray in totally into the algo uh, section? Uh, what would be the starter points? How would he develop? What team does he need to have with him? Or what back softwares or anything extra tools that he would use for uh, making into algo journeys. All right. So being a 
a, from a non-coding background, if someone wants to get into algo trading or if someone wants to get into systems trading, so you're asking what are the things a person need to, needs to have? How do you, they build the team or how do they proceed about it, right? See, with respect to um, algo trading, it is we are in a currently in a no-code platforms. So you know, 10 to 15 years before, if you have to create a website, you now you have to write the necessary programming language to bring up a website. And then after some time, you know, there was multiple platforms out there which made it easier to develop a website without having the coding knowledge. Similarly, now there are multiple no-code platforms available out there which you know, makes this whole process much easier for you to do, you know, get into this algo trading process. So if you leave alone the execution part, so focus more on the logic, the core logic part. So for that core logic part, you need to study the market behavior first. So the current problem, what I've seen is, see 15 years before when I started trading, it was very difficult to test any single idea. So if I wanted to test how the market will behave when it goes about 200 day moving average, or how it you know, behaves when it closes below 200 day moving average, you have to probably write it in AMI broker for formula language and test it. Now, there are multiple no-code platforms available where you just specify the parameters and you backtest it. But the problem with this kind of you know, current uh, you know, nature is, it gives you the end result, but the moment you go to the live trading, then you will stop abruptly in between when it doesn't sync with your own you no know, trading mindset. So that is the biggest problem. So in order to go with that first, fix this first, and then start focusing on you know, having a team of developers or focusing on the executions and everything later. Because if this is not fixed, even though you have the robust execution platform, end of the day, you would not be able to stick to it. So it is not about the best trading strategy. It is not about the least drawdown. It is all about the system which suits your mind, no mindset. So in order to go in that zone, it might take a little longer, but there is enough tools out there currently which helps you to study the market behavior. Like if you just access you know, trading view premium subscription, that enables you to go through to you know, 20,000, 30,000 bars behind where you can do a bar replay and study it. And the next thing is, instead of directly getting into strangle, straddle strategy, just observe how a market might behave on expiry days. This is a simple example. Say for an example, between 9.30 to 3.30 on Thursdays, study the market behavior of Bank Nifty. So it is just five minutes chart. If you plot it for five years, probably it is going to take two hours or three hours to study the behavior. Then if you write a, you know, any kind of Python scripts or Excel scripts, to study how it behaves from morning till evening, from open to high, how high it has moved up, how low it has moved down. Then these will give you an idea, okay, this is how market usually moves on expiry days. Then based on that, you can either create a strangle or strangle based on, okay, until you no know, the overall nifty moves in X percentage, I could do strangle or else I could do straddle. So likewise, you can do it, but best thing is focus on the market behavior, then come to market data and then focus on all the execution part. So, okay, I just uh, need to uh, add one another thing. I am already on the uh, point that you are telling me. There are some uh, software uh, websites like TradeTron, Algotest. I have already uh, made some strategies over there. But as you said, there is a very big gap after deploying them in the live market with our brokers. Right. So that's why I'm planning to uh, shift in with a team. So the, the what are the main persons like a head engineer or anyone else for the tech team. So in that, in that case, either you should outsource the complete work to a developer who is really good at it. Because if you focus currently to focus on this development part, no, you might not be really good at like how the other developer could be. So it's better to outsource the complete work. Probably proposing a business idea. <laughs> so it is either find a person who can no relate to it, say find a complementary skill set. You are really good in reasoning a strategy. Find a coder who is really good in coding but not good in markets. So there is always be a, no, a, no, a guy who is really good at trading might not be good at coding. A guy who is good at coding might not be good at trading. But when these two guys work together, then it makes it much easier. So you have to find a partner like that or you have to outsource this work completely. So it is just like hiring someone for, for full-time or outsourcing a single project? Yeah, full-time doesn't make any sense because no, the work is not going to be there from morning till evening, so it's better to outsource. Thank you so much, thank perfect. you so much. Yeah, thank perfect. you so much, Pulkit, for coming all the way from Lucknow, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah perfect. Hi, uh, this is me here, I am Jitendra. So, Kirubo, of course, you know, we know we keep hearing from you all the time on social media. But Madan, sir, you've been, if I can call you, sir, um, though you are 44 and I'm only 45, but uh, in terms of knowledge, I'm okay. a baby. <laughs> so, uh, but 
I have a little bit of complaint that you know you've been kind of missing in action in social media. You're not taking any programs as well. So uh, if you can just summarize your top three things that you've always emphasized for all of us to you know just reinstate ourselves. We are all struggling very hard to not lose money, and you are a master of making money. So if you can just summarize top three things that we should always and always first do. So that will be great for us. I'm, I'm a master of losing money too. So we are on the same boat, right? So, so much, Jitendra. So can you guys hear me? I don't know whether. Yeah. Okay. Uh, top three things. See, first of all, uh, you know, I I want to congratulate everyone here because it's 3:30 in the afternoon, after the lunch, probably nap time. Markets are over. I guess it's closed, right? Yeah, closed. Yeah, 3:30 done. So. Uh, thank you so much for first of all listening. So it's, it's going to be tough for you guys to just, you know, uh, sit over there and hear the ramblings of two, you know, stupid guys here, right? But unfortunately, you are what you are doing right now. I'm sorry. But the, coming back to the question, uh, the, I think the top three things I would say for any trader is capital. The first thing is capital. You know, if you, if you do not have enough capital, uh, it's, it's called capital markets for a reason, right? So if you do not have enough capital, please do not come into the markets. Uh, guys, I'm going to be cutthroat. You, you know, people who know me knows this. I'm going to be cutthroat. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. So don't get offended if I say something which you don't like. But the direct answer is going to be like that, right? First thing is capital. If you do not have enough capital, please don't come in. So the next question, obvious question is, what is enough capital? That depends on your needs. So let's not go there. The second point I would always emphasize is, you know, come up with a plan. If you do not have a plan, how many business owners here, entrepreneurs, business owners? I, I want to see at least a couple of dozens of people because Hyderabad is known for entrepreneurship. Yeah, so many guys. So you, you guys have a business plan. Without the business plan, you get, you get money from VCs, you know, investors, anybody here who is in the business, got into business without any plan. Why trading should be different? So I'm always like that. So trading plan should be there, should be in place, wherein you know you should know what instruments you want to trade, you should know what kind of money you want to put in, you should know what kind of strategies you want to deploy, you, you should know, first of all, whether you want to be a systematic trader or a discretionary trader. So there are so many aspects to a trading plan, which I do not have the luxury to get into right now. But unfortunately, many people who come into trading think it's a quick, rich scheme. How many people got into trading thinking like that? Quick, rich scheme. Only two people? Guys, Krish, I don't know where Krish is. I think we have an amazing crowd here. So they, they, they came in thinking that it's not quick, rich scheme. Right? But unfortunately, maybe not this crowd, but usually 90% of the people come into the markets thinking, okay, it's as easy as just getting in and getting out, right? But once you are into the markets for two, three years, you know it is not as easy as just getting in and getting out. So trading plan is very important. Yeah, I'll come there. The third point I would say, I'm not going to uh, bore you with the psychology stuff, but the third point I would probably say is your mindset has to be right. I always say this, if you're a discretionary trader, if you are moving houses, if you are getting into your divorce, uh, if, you are, if you have a family member you know, who died recently, do not trade. Because the mindset has to be very sharp for a discretionary trader. How many people agree here, the discretionary traders? If your mindset is not sharp, your trading results will you know, follow with the mindset. Am I right, guys? Anybody with me? I'm not hearing you. Yes, it's the yes. There you go. So the same way, for a systematic trader, you might say, I've automated everything. My mindset is not really, you know, important. Would you want to add anything here, Harsh? Your mindset is not really important if you are a systematic trader. Anybody want to add here? Like Harsh is a systematic trader, I believe. Yeah, yeah. obviously, because human beings are emotional. Okay. That's why we can't uh, no, control our emotions. Right. Otherwise, we'll become right. emotional. So That's whether you are a systematic trader or a discretionary trader, some kind of mindset has to be kicking. So your mindset has to be sharp. So how do you develop that mindset? There is no other shortcut here. You cannot, you know, pop up a blue pill and then have a great mindset. Can anybody have a, you know, get a pill like that here to get a mindset? No, nobody can do that. So what, it, what needs to be done is you need to go through the path of a couple of years. But to go through the path of a couple of years, you need to sustain. For you to sustain, you need to have sufficient capital. For the capital to sustain, you need to have a trading plan. You see how everything is connected now? You just cannot have one thing and, you know, you know, prepare biryani. I always bring this biryani. I mean, Hyderabad, I mean, what, what other example I can bring in biryani, right? So you cannot 
prepare biryani with just one ingredient. You need multiple ingredients, you need proper ratios, you need to know what to put when. The same way in trading, everything has to come together. Did I answer your question, Jitendra? First of all, how many ladies here? Can you please stand up, please? I need one question from each of you, please. I didn't hear any lady asking a question, including Babita. I need one question. So is there any uh, strategy or anything uh, we can optimize the drawdowns? Or how to, reduce, <laughs> how to reduce the drawdown? Okay. See, I know this answer. Yeah. So, so to, give, to give you some more information on this, this guy picked us up from the airport yesterday. That's the only question he had. And how he to took optimize the drawdown? How to reduce drawdown? He's following up with the same question because from the airport, we you know, very intentionally avoided that question. Now he's asking in the stage, so I cannot avoid, right? So if I know the answer, I would probably not be sitting here, right? I do not know the answer. The only way to avoid drawdown, there is actually a way. You can avoid drawdown, you should not trade, right? Is there any other way? I do not know any other way. <laughs> so, so drawdowns are part of trading. It's, it's like Vishal was telling today, right? You know, if you want to breathe out, or uh, sorry, if you want to breathe in, you have to breathe out, right? The same way, there are going to be losses, the drawdowns are going to come. This is a funny way of answering the question. Let's get to the serious way of answering the question. The serious way of answering the question would be something like this. Wherein, you know, you know your maximum loss, and you know probably your maximum drawdown. I'm talking about the system traders here. You know the maximum drawdown, you know the CM, you know the winning rate, you know your number of losers in a row, you know your the A ratio, B ratio, C ratio, Calma ratio, blah, blah ratio, all ratio you know. You're probably the ratio and proportion, uh, you know, father of the world, right? You know everything about everything. But unfortunately, when the drawdown hits, how many people are here the victim of this? When the drawdown hits, you suddenly question your system. How many people here? Everyone. I do not know anybody who has not questioned themselves after five losers in a row. Anybody here? I want you to be on the stage. Trust me, I will have more questions for you. Anybody here? Nobody. The reason being, we are all human beings, as Harsh was telling. The reason is, once we hit a series of losses in a row, you are obviously going to question your self-belief, you are going to question your system, you are probably going to question the market movements. Somebody asked the question today, illogical volatility. I want to know what is illogical volatility. What is logical volatility? <laughs> that illogical volatility is kicking in. The only reason people are putting the illogical word before volatility is he's frustrated because of the recent losses. That's why he's saying illogical volatility. You get that? So everybody's frustrated with the losses. But if you know how to handle losses mentally, this particular profession might be a little bit easier on, easier on you. But if you do not know how to handle losses, for example, my wife does not have the appetite to go through losses. So for her, trading will not work. She might learn it, she might learn to handle the losses, but naturally, as an innate trait, she does not know how to handle losses. Some people have the appetite, some people do not have the appetite. But if you do not have the appetite, don't fret, it can be learned. But without learning that art, you will not sustain in this profession for more than a couple of years. Did I answer the question? And, and also, I have also one more thing to add, Madan. See, with respect to drawdown, the mindset that we need to have is, like trading is like getting into a boxing ring. See, the moment you get into the boxing ring, the most, uh, you know, the professional boxers, their mindset is not to give the, you know, the best knockout punch to the opponent. Their expectation is always when the opponent will give the knockout punch, how do I handle it? If you check the history of Mike Tyson or Mohammed Ali, the major time that they spent is training on their neck rather than anything else in the body because when they give a, no, the, when the opponent give a knockout punch, neck is the one that is going to get affected much. So these two boxers who have been, you know, the best boxers in the world, they have spent so much of time handling that knockouts. So specifically when it comes to you no know, trading, it is similar to that. Like we can say before, whenever we take a trade, the first question that we ask is how much we are going to make in that trade. And very rarely we are going to ask how much we are going to lose in that trade. And with respect to drawdown, like how much control that you have in a drawdown matters over the long run. Say, you now if I just pinch Madan, it is not going to pain him. It is just going to you know, be there for a few seconds. How do you know? <laughs> no, it's, it's going to pain you, but okay. it's not going to be there forever. Okay. 
and if I take a blade and cut you, yeah. and probably, you know, it will be there for a few days. Yeah. If I take a knife <laughs> and then cut you, it's going to be there for weeks. It's about how much, you know, the hurt, the overall, <laughs> uh, the, you know, the drawdown streaks or the losing streaks that happens over the period of time, that is going to matter. So, you know, having the right mindset, as he rightly pointed out, it is, there is no way to avoid the drawdowns, but it is more about handling the drawdowns. So the, first, the right question is, how do I handle the drawdowns rather than how do I avoid drawdowns? On a lighter note, have anybody watched Mike Tyson's neck uh, exercise video on YouTube? You will puke because his neck looks like this. Have you anybody watched uh, Mike Tyson's exercise video? Praful is here, Praful Kulkarni. I have seen him doing that in Twitter, actually. You know, he posted Neck exercise. Yeah, for neck exercise, yeah. Oh. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I've you seen that, I've seen that. You that thing like that yeah. and will go on like, you know, as if you roll that thing. It's amazing. Yeah, anyways, yeah. So that, that's the point. So it is all not about giving the knockout in trading. It is all about handling that knockout. So you know, once you get into the trading phase, nobody is, you know, they cannot avoid drawdowns at all. Yeah. And, the first, and one more thing is, it is like, just like any kind of illness, you would have gone through any kind of illness, right? You, you know, any major illness or light illness. Once you go through that illness phase, every single cell in your body knows exactly how to you know, resist that when it happens again. Yeah. Similarly, in drawdown, once you go through that first couple of drawdowns or one or two drawdowns, you will, your mindset will eventually know how do you handle it, how do you yeah. overcome it. So the only way to handle drawdown is to face the drawdown. Yeah. Avoiding drawdown is like avoiding in-laws. How many people have tried that? <laughs> I mean, you can avoid in-laws by not getting married, but you know, once you're married, you know, you got to face them, right? So irrespective of the gender here, you know, if you're a female, you have to face your in-law, if you're a male, you have to face your in-law, so it's like that. And also the best drawdown detector are the wife, they'll exactly know. Whether you are in drawdown, whether you made profits today, whether you that made loss today. That is the initial phase. After yeah, five years, phase. we'll we'll know how to put po poker face, right? <laughs> we'll always have the face like this, whether it's a profit or loss. So wife will not know after some time. So initial yeah. days, everybody will notice. <laughs> not wife, spouse, gender neutral, spouse. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Next question. Come on, guys. Now it's warming up. Yeah. Yeah. I think he said illogical volatility. There you go. <laughs> I'm watching. I, I can hear you. Uh, go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. My question was a bit on. Uh, your name. Your name. Where you're from? What yeah. You my name is Abhijit. Um, Abhijit. Okay. Yeah. I'm from Indore. So okay. idea was to do the South Darshan. So I thought ki attending this conference would be great. So, um, but then my question was on trading psychology. Okay. Uh, see, earlier it used to be so easy. Uh, there was one expiry, one Thursday. So be it Friday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, you sell that only. Uh, now, morning may every time in the morning, I have to take a decision ki go for zero DT, which gives a faster realization of profits and bigger profits, or uh, you know, go for uh, two DT or three DT, just make it loss, matlab, uh, higher risk, ka nahi hai, and uh, you get uh, slower profits. So, uh, this decision, you know, it kind of uh, disturbs me every time. Yeah. Today, I, I would have traded Sensex, but because of this disaster of last two, th three weeks, pehle jo tha, I stopped it. But today, it was so sweet. There or you go. Last to last Market week also. luring you. Yeah. So now what will happen is like maybe Praful Kulkarni or Jagan sir will post ki 2% today in Sensex expiry. And uh, <laughs> like I am in regret. Or <laughs> to, how, like how to deal with this? Get out of Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, jokes aside. Yeah, good question. Uh, Abhijit, uh, see it's like this, right? So you're going for the war. Let's say it's not a war. I'm just giving an example. Hypo hypothetically, you're going for a war. So before entering into the arena or before entering into the war zone, if you're figuring out whether you want to take a sword or you want to take a gun or you want to take a, some rocket launcher or something, then you're going to be messed up. So that is where the plan has to be. The reason why you are confused is you're always looking for something better. And you're always looking at the past, reflecting, reflecting on the future. So you're thinking that, okay, Jagan has made this much money last Sensex, Prapul has made this much money last mid-cap, you know, expiry. So maybe I will also make the same. So I don't want to trade the next day expiry. So I want to trade only this day expiry because last week, Mr. and Mr. and Mr. made so much of money. So that is where I think the social media kicks in, right? So I always tell this to my people, you know, when I used to take classes, I stopped it long time ago now. I always tell this to people, if you are having this kind of confusion, dilemma in your mind, 
the only way to avoid this dilemma is obviously I have to have a plan. The second important thing is to get out of social media. It's a big problem because you do not know what Jagan's appetite is. You do not know what Kriba's appetite is, risk appetite. I'm talking about that, not the actual appetite, okay? <laughs> that we will know in the lunch or dinner time. So what I'm trying to tell you is, so when you start comparing yourself with people, which you think you are not doing, but just by going to social media, but trust me, our mind, subconscious mind is like a sponge. It's gonna absorb everything that goes into it, right? So you obviously will, Humans are obviously competitors. We want to compete with other people, right? So you will compete with other people in terms of, okay, I didn't make this much last week, I didn't make this much last month, so I want to make this much this particular day. What I have to do, I would have to probably trade this instrument because this instrument has done this much in the past. But what you are missing out is Kriba or Jagan or whoever it is you quoted, Praful, I guess. So what, the, what you are missing is these guys have a long-term plan. So they are doing this because they know that consistency will bring in the results. But what you and I are missing is the consistency. Today we trade X, tomorrow we trade Y, suddenly we wake up in the night 3 o'clock, God will tell us to trade A, we will trade A. That's not gonna work. I mean, making sense guys? It's just not for Abhijit. Abhijit had a very good question because a lot of people have this dilemma. The problem with this is the social media. Yeah, actually after the results, we'll be happy with whatever the profits we made. But when you compare that with Jagan or someone, oh my God, this guy made higher profits. I then am, the happiness goes. I am telling you, if you are happy when Jagan is making 0.1%, you are making 0.3%, you are dead. <laughs> Trust me. The reason is that today it's Jagan, today it's Kriba, tomorrow it's going to be somebody else. There is no dearth for you comparing with other people. I mean, I mean making sense, guys. This is actually a human in real life. We keep on comparing ourselves with a lot of people. Don't do that. You have a plan. How many people are systematic traders here? How many, oh wow. How many, how many people have meddled with your system in the past? Meddled. And how many people have regretted meddling with your system? There, everybody. The reason is, I always tell this to people. If you are so itchy about doing some discretionary trade when you are a systematic trader, have a separate account. No problem. But do not touch your so long back tested 10 years of system, don't touch that. Please don't touch that. It's like touching an electric wire. We know what's gonna happen next. Regret will follow, you would have probably, I, I know this, I have done this, I've been a big time victim of this, I'm been, I've, been, I've been a big time guilty of this too. What I have done Abhijit in the past is, I have been very smart, overrid my system, rather than coming out at 325 let's say, I have overridden my own system, come out at two o'clock, let's say the profit is 100 points in Nifty, right? Let's put points, 100 points in Nifty. By 325, had I come out, my profit would have been 40 points. I would be flying. My IQ would be 162, world record. See, I know how market is gonna reverse. I was so happy that day. Next day, I will do the same thing. I'll be so happy again because I saved 60 points. The following day, the market bugger will move 150 points up like what happened yesterday. If I had come out of 215 yesterday, 215 to 330 was 150 points move yesterday. So that regret will kill us inside out. So please have a plan, get out of social media. You can come back to social media once your psychological resilience is high. Until then, please do not get into social media. If somebody is into the social media business, I'm so sorry. You can have customers outside the trading, but inside the trading, social media is not good. Am I making sense, guys? No? Yes. Okay, ladies question. My name is Shraddha. Shraddha, okay. I came here from Nagpur. Wow. So, uh, it's been a three plus year that I'm into market, wow. full time trader. Okay. So being a trader, there are multiple stages, like uh, fear of execution, lot of things. So I am into a, that greed wala zone. <laughs> we need more money, more money. So I don't know where Who to stop. Yeah. Okay. So where to stop? That is my question. Take the question. Yeah. So the question is, she is more greedy and she wants to do? She wants to know when to stop, when to stop being greedy. I <laughs> think we should be scalable if you are in into the business. See, with respect to you no know, trading, obviously, you know, there will always be a other guy who, who is always going to make higher profits than you. Be it in business, there is always be a other guy who is going to make higher revenue than you. 
So as long as you keep having that greediness, it might burn you out over the few years. Say, suppose if you don't have this specific mindset, probably you would be doing trading 10 years, 15 years. But when you have this kind of mindset, even though you have your own proper rules and everything, because of this external pressure which you have put in by yourself, that is going to burn you out over the you know, few years of journey. So definitely you might even quit trading at one point of time because you came into trading to make money and you wanted to make even more higher money but that itself will become a big hurdle for you to follow the same process which you came in. So to avoid greediness, it is not in general in trading you can avoid greediness and in life you would be so happy. You are having this greediness mind, not only in trading, even in your general life set. Say, you know, like for an example, you might compare that with your neighbor or you might compare that with your friends. You always wanted to be, you know, one level up higher than your closed community. So that is there outside of your trading mindset. So that is what it is getting impacted in your own trading. So once you clear that out in your outside of your trading life set, definitely that will not have an impact in your trading. Am I making any sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, another, uh, I, it's not a pointer to add, it's just a funny thing, right? Trading is the only profession I know, there might be other professions. Trading is the only profession I know, you will regret when you make profit, you will regret when you make losses. How many people know this? Why do you regret when you make profits? <laughs> huh? By looking at others. Okay. Comparison. Okay. Why do you regret when you make losses? Huh? Waited for some more time. Okay. More empty. I have a different take. This is all okay. I have a different take. You, you regret when you make profits because you'll be like, maybe I should have put bigger size. You regret when you make losses, maybe I should have avoided this trade. My mind was telling me not to take this trade. I don't know why I took this trade. How many people have done this? Okay, we have a lot of real traders, good. <laughs> All right, so anyways, yeah. Next question, please. Hello, uh, this question is to Kribal. Uh, like you have been posting your uh, uh, regular- I'm interrupting, your name, okay. where you are from, what do you do for a living? Okay. This is uh, Manita Tinam from Chennai. Okay. I'm working in uh, Value. Okay. Uh, Part-time trader, I'm just. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. The question is to Kriba. Like you have been posting your uh, auto strangle bot. Like you will be saying that based on the data, it's choosing the call option or put, or put option. So like what are the data you'll be analyzing? Like open interest or future interest? Like what are the data you'll it, be like It analyzing? is mainly price. Okay. So mainly price, based on the price, say initially if, you know, it will start with a neutral uh, movement and if the market is moving <coughs> in any side of direction and tries to you know, um, break a range and tries to move up, then it will turn that into a directional, into a non-directional, into a directional. So mostly it will have these you know, market movements, price actions, I don't know whether it is breaking a specific range or not, whether it is trying to trade in within a stipulated range. So based on that, it keeps adjusting the positions. Like what will be the like, uh, fundamental analysis and thing? Like See, the basic idea I'll tell you. So yeah, with respect to trend following, mm -hmm. so the core principle behind trend following is mm -hmm. once a particular uh, stock hits a 52-week high, there is a high probability that it is going to make a new 52-week high. Okay. A stock which hits an all-time high, there is a high probability that it is going to hit a new all-time high. So with respect to options, the core principles are like, for an example, on expiry, all OTM options expire worthless. This is core principle. Okay. But what is the probability that whatever the OTM options which you have taken will stay in OTM? What is the probability? Because still it can become at the money, in the, you know, it can become in the money. So if you focus on those kind of core principles and try to build a system, then that is going to last longer than focusing on, you know, uh, ready-made systems. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, next question. Um, I'm Rosario from Chennai. Uh, I'm a full-time trader too. Oh, everybody sitting together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my question is basically on the recent uh, Sensex route. So we had option freezes and uh, all those stuffs happening, right? Okay. Given India has been blooming in options, uh, like we are number one in the world in terms of option turnover, all those stuff. Uh, what what are the systematic risk we are? Uh, we we are every day we all of us are doing short straddles and short strangles without even hedge. I mean. We are doing without hedge to reduce the margin. I mean, uh, reduce the position sizing. Yeah. To be conservative in first place. But if the market crashes and our SL gems, and we don't have what is the remedy, and if the bro we couldn't connect to the broker or NSEs couldn't help uh, help us out, how are we going to avoid this black swan intraday event?
Was this not a close meeting inside SEBI last recently? <laughs> <laughs> How to avoid this? Anyways, go ahead. I didn't know if it happened. Yeah. Uh, see, with respect to these risk factors which you have mentioned, of course, you know, there are multiple risk layered factors there. So when if you're an algo trader or if you're an automated trader, the risk starts from the API structure itself. What if in case the API disconnects? What if in case the broker disconnects? Yeah. Okay, so if the broker disconnects, you have multiple brokers. So what if in case the exchange goes down? I think NSE has gone down in 2021 or some no, date where the whole date was down. Right. Correct. And coming to Sensex. That's happened three times. Yeah. And coming to Sensex, which is gaining volumes recently on Fridays. In fact, on Fridays, more than Bank Nifty, Nifty and all NSE indices, BAC indices, Sensex is having the highest volume, highest turnover now. But with respect to exchange wise, see NSE has two disaster recovery sites, one in Chennai and one in some other place and one in their actual operations. But when you have these comparison between NSE and BAC, NSE is way, way better than BAC. But of course, if BAC exchange itself is goes down, what would happen? Recently, there was some instance where the adapter was not getting connected to the broker, the orders was not going through. And when you handle these kind of issues, you have to conclude two things. First thing is, what is the worst case scenario if market tanks 1,000 points or if you're not able to square off your positions? Say the intraday positions becoming an overnight. What would, I, what would be the worst case scenario? What is the maximum loss that you could face? So that is where, you know, as Madan mentioned, what would be the number of lots that you need to bring in? So just because I've kept 15 points stop loss, I cannot just trade you no know, higher number of quantity. That 15 points can easily jump. My position, if it is not closed, and if it is getting you know, opened up tomorrow because of huge gap up, that is going to get affected. So all these things will definitely be there. You can't avoid it. And the only way to avoid all these things is, as Madan said, you have to stop trading. Only other way, the proper thing is to reduce the position size so that even if there is any worst case scenario, because even in intraday, if you see in 2000 or the, during this uh, 20 hour attack, the market opened and it was closed in between and it opened after 15 days. So during the intraday time itself, they have shut down the markets and they stopped it and they opened it after 15 days. So imagine if your intraday position is open and suddenly the market closed and in case if it opens after 15 days with a huge gap, that kind of with a terrorist attack, so the market would be extremely bearish. So where your positions would be. So just because your backtest only has five back-to-back -back losses or if your backtest has X percentage of drawdown, that is not going to happen. As your worst case scenario and figure out what would be the ideal position that you can trade. That is the only way to handle it. You can't avoid all these things. And being in uh, no Indian markets with huge turnovers and all this, that might happen. So can you has nicely instilled fear. <laughs> no, can, can you give me any thumble sheet? The thing is, is that's what, it, these are black swan events. Considering this, I should be trading one, one lot for 10 lakhs. So that's not going to help us also in terms of return also, right? So, right. so I have a, say, uh, say for an example, if market goes up or goes down in one certain direction to a huge extent, if you're an option seller, definitely the overall results is going to be skewed because of these events. So if you have an option buying system also in place, so if you're long as well, if you're going you know, short, net position you will be long if market moves in such kind of you no know, drastic moves. So when you combine these kind of option buying as well as option selling system to a you know, to greater extent you can control the damage. Okay. Last three questions. Yeah, thank you. Timing, yeah. time is up. I didn't realize that. It's, yeah, it's and how many of you here you know, uh, wants to get into full-time trading? Currently working and get into full-time trading. So you guys must be having more questions because when you want to jump from your profession to full-time trading, that is when you, know, you will have this dilemma, should I go or not? And people who have, you know, before I get into full-time trading, I was making good returns. But the moment you came into full-time trading, the kind of mindset that you have as a part-time trader versus full-time trader is totally, totally different. So you do not have any questions related to okay, being a full-time trader. last three questions because we are out of time. Uh, myself, Vera. I'm a trader and I'll go okay. uh, developer and investor. Okay. So my question is uh, investing and uh, Trading both are like a business we okay. considering, right? So, so these days, like uh, uh, SEBI uh, imposing the disruptive um, rules, like uh, for all goes, everybody needs to write a certification, and like uh, extending hours, right? So, how these kind of situations we had, right? As a retailer traders or investors, so is there any plan to this kind of disruptive uh, systems in place, right? It's a completely infrastructure change, right? They are increasing hours. How can we yeah. plan for our business, this yeah. kind of things? 
right otherwise everybody is uh, confusing about this kind of stuff yes she's a regulator right so regulator can do anything they want so you know they want to let's say increase the hours i think that talks has been going on um mr pankaj from nsc is here so uh, the talks has been going on but unfortunately it didn't materialize that the same way regulators are regulators so they're going to do whatever they want to do so i always tell this to people you know traders are the most adaptable human beings in the world we keep on adapting right so that is is there any other choice other than adapting we have to adapt so so you'll have to figure out a uh, ways of being in the market after 330 if it gets extended you'll have to see for example leverage went up right one and a half years ago leverage completely went off the people who are into option selling 3 years 2 years before the this particular day let's say from 2021 or before that they made you know a lot of money due to leverage now the leverage route is gone so but still people adapted still so many new people are coming into the market so the we will adapt other than that i think we will have to cross the bridge when it comes and moreover this is not totally new you know see yeah. if you uh, read this book a bull bear and other beast where they have specifically explained what has happened in indian markets for the last 25 years from 1990 to till date where initially the actual working hours with respect to indian exchanges only 2 and 1/2 hours only 2 and 1/2 hours correct and eventually they increased it to you no know, couple of more hours then i think 10 o'clock the market started yeah from 9:55 yeah. so 9:55 it started and then eventually you know what now the main focus on to extend the you know the market timing is to increase their overall volumes in general see beyond 330 the maximum volumes is going to go abroad i thought increasing hours was to save retail increasing saving retail <laughs> See, nobody is ready to you know, sit. See, by sitting, it's from nine o'clock to three o'clock itself. No, we are done. Exactly, we are burning out already. And yeah. extending, and moreover, you don't need to sit in front of a system from nine o'clock to eleven fifty-five to make money, right? Correct. It's up to the your own trading systems how you want to control it. But you no, know, having said that, these regulations and everything will keep coming in. Yes. And the people will always find a way to adapt to it. Absolutely. Yeah. The last Thanks. two questions. One last one. Yes, last sir. Question. Sorry. One last, last question. question. Okay. Uh, one last last so, question sorry last sir question. my name is bonesh i am from andhra pradesh yes. sir i'll get your question later yeah. yeah sir what should we consider if we want to scale up our capital with respect to psychology and emotions statistics also scaling up the capital with respect to psychology and statistics okay so yeah i can cover this up madam but i have to explain this with a very small story probably it's going to take 5 more minutes i'll explain this in scaling up of this They'll capital bring a knife and stab you no 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 i'll finish it i'll finish it two minutes so, yeah maximum two minutes see i also had the same issue so what happens is whenever you trade with five lots or 10 lots you will really make very good profits and you no know, over a period of few weeks or a few months you will realize okay i'm really making good profits why don't i increase my capital from 10 lakhs to 50 lakhs so immediately you will increase your capital to 50 lakhs and then again you are not used to the fluctuations of the markets so what happens is see there is a beautiful story which i have read multiple years before following that incident i was able to adapt to it and i was able to scale up to the capital from where i am now see there is a guy called uh, milo i have shared the story multiple times many people would know it so there is a guy called milo so this guy is you know based out of uh, you know ancient greece where there used to be a wrestling match or weightlifting match that used to happen every single time and this guy milo is the world champion in that where he has won back to back champion in this weightlifting competition so one day they announced a competition stating that so we are going to have a match between milo and another competitor where you no know, they are going to announce within next few years they are going to have a match together on the stage and now everybody is curious to see how these two guys are going to get trained in order to win that match so one guy is anyways a superstar uh, no championship but the other guy the competitor is completely new so everybody is curious how this competitor is going to win this match so no once this news is announced its competitor what he did is he directly went to the market and he bought a very big bull so that you could lift that and train hard so now people are even more curious see even a competitor itself we see is going and buying a big bull to handle it definitely milo must be having a super good plan to take over so now what milo does was he just went to the same markets and he bought a very small calf now people wondered why a world champion who won back to back no weightlifting champion has just bought a small calf whereas the competitor bought a very big bull 
So now over the years, what happened was the competitor is trying to lift that bull every single day, but he couldn't lift it because it outweighs his own weight. Whereas Milo, who has bought a small calf, he just put it on his shoulder and wherever he goes, he lifts this calf and he'll go. Whether it is to the markets or where to the you know, training field, wherever he goes, he'll lift it. So over the years, he is used to the weight of the calf since he is carrying it on his shoulder every single day. So over a period of years, once at the time of the wrestling, I mean the weightlifting match happens, this calf has grown into a big bull. So at the time of this, you know, this exact match, he was able to lift that bull effortlessly. But the first guy who bought the big bull on day one, he couldn't lift at all. So this is exactly what we do with position sizing. So as long as you scale your capital from 3 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, you are getting used to the fluctuations of MTM. So you would be able to handle it. You will not stop it abruptly. But if you are like the competitor who is to scale up the capital immediately and trying to do it, definitely not possible. So this is yeah. the right way to scale up. Uh, Thank you, sir. Sir, Madan, sir. To just sum it up all, uh, I want to big time congratulate Krish, Arsha, and I think Nayab, I guess. He's the one who's speaking. Yeah. So give, give them a big round of applause, guys. It's, it's not a joke, you I mean, know. Uh, yeah. Maintaining this kind of convention, organizing it, it's, yeah, even uh, Saddam was a uh, key player here. So thank you so much, guys. Thanks for the opportunity, and if you have so, any more questions, you can ask later.